But going back to defense, without Jakob, there's no chance that we're in this game. There's no chance that we're in the Nuggets mm-hmm. game, and there's no chance that we're in yep. the Bucks game. So, I mean, I can just say that, and I feel like everybody who's watching this knows what I'm talking about. He's been guarding Jokic. I mean, he literally guarded like the past two MVPs in back-to-back games with Giannis and Jokic, and then he has to guard AD tonight. And had him struggling at the beginning of the game. The only reason AD was scoring was from free throws. At one point, I remember at the beginning of the first half, or maybe this was in the third quarter. I don't know. He's nine for 23 at one point. I think that was in the third quarter, actually. And I just remember thinking, like, dang, like, this is one of the best posts in the league. We were playing physical with him. Jakob stuffed the crap out of him at the beginning of the game. Yes, Mm -hmm. AD stuffed him, too. Um, But at the same time, just that mentality, that aggressiveness, like your tweet, you said, uh, I forget exactly what the other part was, but I remember you said aggressive Jakob Jakob is greater than conservative Jakob. Was that Mm -hmm. on point? Yeah, that was it. Yes, okay. Memory is not failing me. Good to know that at 21 years old, we're we're still rolling, I think. (laughs) Anyways, going back to Jakob, um, aggressive Jakob is like i mean remember i think it was last episode i was like what if or maybe i was talking to a friend about this i don't know but what if Jakob played with eubanks's aggressiveness i don't know if mm-hmm. i brought that up to you but that was yeah. kind of what i was thinking and maybe not full go tonight i mean really he was actually more aggressive than eubanks tonight overall so yes he was on that level and we've seen the uh the results and the rewards that the San Antonio Spurs reap when he plays that way. And I feel like three episodes ago, we were like, maybe they signed Jock because Zach Collins, because they're ready to get rid of Jakob. He mm-hmm. is, he is, I mean, he, like we talk about DeJounte being that defensive anchor. He is our, those two are our defensive anchors. You know, on the perimeter, it's DeJounte. And in the post, it's Jakob. Just has impressed me so much he has an ugly shot now but it's like the shot goes in it's his shot i don't care Mm -hmm. if it's ugly take it and make it that's all that matters to me yes he's got to work on free throws but it's like he might just be Shaq for his whole career but i mean Shaq was Shaq, and i mean not saying Jakob's Shaq, but you get what i'm saying you can be bad at free throws and still be an effective player yeah i have to agree with you uh defensive MVP of tonight, Jakob Pertl, hands down, because he had to guard so many phenomenal post players, most of all Anthony Davis. Um, and it was less so the product of what he was able to do, but just his mindset. Like you said, his aggressiveness, both offensively and defensively. But he was very vocal, I thought, tonight. Something I don't normally see yes, from Jakob. Yes, I saw that too. Yeah, he was he was chirping with both his teammates and a little bit with you know the other guys, kind of you <laughs> yes, know, he pumping was. as he walks in back to his <laughs> bench. You know, he's just shoulder nudges and stuff like that. I like to see that from our big guy, and I'm glad that he's finally kind of finding this confidence in himself to be that seven foot big man that the Spurs have always kind of hung their hats on. You know what I mean? So happy to see him be an effective defender. <laughs> 